And where do you place the importance of having low triglycerides as a cardiologist with regards to, you know, just cardiovascular health? I mean, ApoB is going to be much higher than that, but I look at it as a marker of your metabolic health. You know, again, I would like to see almost everybody's triglycerides to be under 80. Mm. Tell us about the link about blue lights and triglycerides. That's the first I've heard, you know, obviously interviewed Jack Cruz twice on the show. We've had Jack Wilson on the show. I've never known the link between, you know, artificial blue light and tri high triglycerides. My uh, understanding is that, is that the um, the pancreas and the liver, um, you know, basically get the wrong signals from too much exposure on the melanopsin receptor. And that's something that will help trigger that. You know, you're going to be also raising cortisol levels, which then raises blood sugar. And then the blood sugar ultimately kind of has to get repackaged up into triglycerides if you don't use that blood sugar for uh, immediate use. So at least sure. I think that's the, the, the linkage for it. Brilliant. We'll check that out. That's absolutely fascinating. Another reason to get triglycerides down. Uh, I know you had you were on with Dr. Gabriel on a brilliant podcast talking about protein, and she said, you know, Dr. Stuart Phillips on the show. I, I like the little acronym of low carbohydrate, low fat, high fat. I, I think the protein macronutrient is very, very important. There's a lot of debate about it. As a cardiologist, let's talk about protein where people should be looking at from a heart health perspective. So yes, my friend, Dr. Lyon, you know, she's an expert in what she uh, has, you know, deemed the term muscle centric medicine. You know, muscles are your organs of longevity, you know, 80% of your glucose is going to get disposed of in your muscle and insulin resistance starts in your muscles. So people who age well have healthy levels of muscle mass. And if you don't do something to take care of your muscles, you ultimately become sarcopenic. If you become sarcopenic where your muscles are essentially, you know, being degraded and you don't have much muscle mass then your metabolic engines aren't very active. You can't burn sugar very effectively for energy because you don't have the engines to do it. Um, and after the age of 40, you become anabolically resistant. So it's much harder to continue to add on muscle after the age of 40. You're just basically trying not to play a losing game. You can still add muscle on, but it's not as easy because your hormones aren't as vigorous at helping lay down muscle growth. So for muscle synthesis, uh, you have to do resistance or strength training, you know, two to three times a week. And then you have to get the right protein load to trigger muscle protein synthesis. And it's mainly about the amino acid leucine. Uh, and it's a meal threshold of leucine that you require. It generally needs to be around two grams per meal. Now, it's a rough estimate that, you know, 30 grams of high quality protein is going to have about two grams of leucine in it. So from their kind of uh, data, that 90 grams is probably the bare minimum people need to get that leucine threshold just to maintain the muscle mass that they have. If somebody's trying to add on more muscle mass, which you're not able to do if you're dieting, you know, you need a protein uh, load that's going to allow the muscles to have their building blocks to make more muscle units. You're going to generally want to be north of one gram per pound of your ideal body weight to make that happen. So protein becomes the kind of base macronutrient. Now, I know sometimes in the world of, you know, the biohackers and the quantum health people, they see, you know, talk about like food isn't important. Well, I don't say food's not important. You got to work on the circadian rhythm stuff first. Food is important, but you know you have to be nuanced into the, the thinking about it. But you know the macronutrient that most people will ignore because you know, they get in the fights on the carbohydrates and the fat side is they don't really look at getting the high quality protein because that is really the source of healthy muscles long term. Mm -hmm.